questions, but I'm trying to identify if this is the general manager, if this is an operations person, just help me on what that topic is or what on some of your insight that you're looking for so I can match up the best person to address that for you. <laughs> Once you get those questions, then you could build that message that you have and what is it that you wanna answer and what is it you wanna say. And I always try to prep people when they go into an interview with just try to remember three things because they may be four, but three is usually the limit on what people can retain if you're going into an interview and trying to remember something. So what's the most important thing if you're if you're talking about an event is is a brief description of the event, when it is and how to buy tickets. Those are really the three things. If it's about what we're going through now, the help, the comfort and safety of our guests and artists and performers is always our top priority. That's number one. Number two, we're doing everything possible to make sure that we adhere to make to address that our guests our artists or patrons are safe when they come here. And three, the last point is any steps that anyone would need to take. It will be posted on our website and on social media. I don't think you need to get into all of the minutia of what you're doing, especially as a lot of restrictions have been reduced at this point. Um, if we had had this discussion maybe a week ago or a month ago, we may have had a, a little bit deeper discussion, but I don't think you have to get wrapped up in all of this explanation of what we're doing when there are less restrictions. And I know there are some states that, that are still restricted, but if you look at Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Texas, Florida, there, there are no restrictions. California may be a, a little different. Um, a few other reminders when you're, when you're eventually doing the interview, and, and what I would recommend is role play. I've done this a lot with, with, with my um, clients or GM or those that are going to do the media interview is I'll, I'll, I'll act as if I'm the reporter and I'll ask that GM a couple of questions and I'll, I'll give them practice. And don't be afraid to critique it. If you don't think that that person is answering the questions the best way possible, work with that person. Because again, as I said at the beginning, we're talking to the customer here. So what I tell people is if, if you can get excited about your event, your event will be exciting. So get excited when you're talking to the media. If this is about a show or bringing people back, if this is an unfortunate, situa an unfortunate situation, so can show concern, show compassion. But I think if you can get somebody excited for what you're talking about and your spokesperson is excited, people will wanna come and see an event. So that's those are kind of the tips that I would offer, but I, I thought what might be best is just kind of open it up and and have a discussion. I remember going to some of these roundtables at some of the arena marketing conferences and, and doing it like this and just sharing examples and, and sharing questions and answering them might, was always one of my favorite parts of attending the sessions. So if there are questions, I could, I could answer them. You might have to unmute to ask them. I, I know um, besides COVID, because uh, you're right, a lot of this information, it changes daily. And now it's just gotten so generic that we're just basically saying we're going to abide by the recommended guidelines, whatever that is that day, you know, because it changes so much. Um, but what I'm also noticing, I don't know if you are, when I'm prepping my execs, obviously there's big on the DEI conversation as well as sustainability, those are huge hot topics. And we just established a DEI work group. So we're still kind of working through it a lot. So we've been able to put together some messaging, but have you noticed that a lot? Those have been on top of COVID, huge topic, topic, topics on everything. Like I nominated somebody for 40 under 40 yesterday and those two things came up. They are starting to percolate as, as more of the topics. And I, and I would say is don't force something that isn't there yet. If it's something that you're working on, that's good. And be, don't be afraid to be honest with somebody and say, um, this is something we're putting together. This is something we're working on. We're building a task force to address this. These are things that we're looking into. Because I think if you force it and, and say, oh yeah, we're doing that, we're doing, um, DEI, oh yeah, we're, we're addressing sustainability and you don't have the backup or the proof to show it, you're gonna be called out for it. So take the time, make sure you get it right and, and don't be afraid to wait a little bit that it's up and running 
or if you're going to hire somebody, I see a lot of companies are hiring experts in DEI. If you're going to hire somebody, why don't you wait until they've been in place for a little bit, wait for them to make an impact a little bit and then announce the position because all you're really doing by announcing the position is checking off the box. If you're just checking off the box, you're not really doing anything. Show the impact that you've made, show what you're doing, that that would help out a lot. Um, Vanessa, when you, you said something at the beginning and we can come back to the re regular part of your question is a, a lot of people are panicking like, I, I have to answer this question and I, and, and I might say, well, when is your first event? Well, we don't have Disney on ice until July 25th. Well, why are we even answering any questions now? It, it's going to change tomorrow. It's going to change next week. And it's definitely going to change by July 25th. So it's best to just direct them to our website and say, if you're coming to X venue to see Disney on ice on July 25th, anything you need to know will be updated regularly on our website. So I, I think it's, you don't have to rush the answer right now. Yeah, absolutely. Good point. It's, of course, just a topic. You know, we're announcing shows. God, I mean, I, Aaron Miller and I, we work on, and I, I don't know, some Staples Center people, we have like, seems like 50 shows a day that we're announcing. Everybody right is. Now. Everything's and coming so everybody's back. Everybody's like, Everything. well, what are the guidelines? What are the guidelines? But, but you don't, but you're not the health, you're not the, you're not the CDC. The, the, I don't know California, but in Pennsylvania, there are no longer restrictions. Everything's open. So why do I have to tell you what the guidelines are? There's no more restrictions. So it's like anything that you would need to know to come to the venue is on our website. That's the answer. You don't have to get caught up into it because what you're going to do is you're going to put somebody on camera that's going to say the comfort and safety of our guests is a top priority. Uh, we're sanitizing the building. We're doing all this. And then they're going to push back and say, well, aren't you worried? Well, then what are you going to say? Then you're going to look scared or you're not going to have an answer. So I, I would rather less is more in this situation. I don't think you need to put somebody, a GM from a building to talk about all the preparations you're doing for a show that's not happening for a couple of weeks. Like you could you could show them the day it's happening and just say, hey, the the X venue is reopening today as Disney on Ice opens a eight show run or whatever and let media come down and watch. But I don't think you. I hope I'm helping people here by telling them you don't have to stress out about explaining everything right now. I think the website and social should help you if you if you're feeling pressure to answer it and the event is tonight, that's a different story. <coughs> Any questions, other questions, thoughts? I'm looking through the chat to see if anybody has anything in the chat, but don't be afraid, you guys. I, I, there's so many great familiar faces. It's so fun to see so many of you. I wish we were in person, um, but I love seeing all these faces, and I'm sure you all have your own individual issues that you're dealing with. How has it been? I, I know you've been opening a bunch of new venues. How has that process been? Well, the, the venues that OBG is opening haven't opened yet, but New York opens in the fall, but it's it's taking all of the precautions that are necessary as as we've been saying but it's it's new ventilation or is it new as it um, contactless tickets is it contactless concessions those are things that you could bring up but I, I think all of that can be explained on your website or social is you if you think it's necessary to bring in a media person and show them all the things that you're doing that's okay but just be prepared that they may ask questions that get, dive real deep into this or ask you more than you're prepared to answer. And and I think you could get away with it just saying that the event's open tonight. Let the customers talk. Let the customers share their experiences on social and let the customers really rave because most of our business is word of mouth. And I think it's it's different now in today's society that they all, they're all on social. They're sharing their experiences the minute they walk in to the minute they walk out. And I think they're speaking to our customers that way for us. Push me back if you disagree. That's okay. I do have a question for you. Sure, Joe. It's uh, Gerald Parker from First Class Group Tickets. We work with promoters and venues across the Canada, all of which are in different phases of reintegration post-COVID or at, at the latter stages. What we need to do, because uh, our group sales clients could be corporate entities that have head offices across the across the country and around the world, but particularly in Canada, 
what one provision may be covering here in the Toronto area would not be applicable the other side of the country, Vancouver, et cetera, et cetera. Um, with that being said, um, do you, I, I know you made mention to being general, but we've got to add some specificity in that regard to give those group leaders the comfort that they need to basically spread that message to all of their group leaders, uh, all their, their people that they are obviously uh, engaging to go to those shows. I would just direct them to the venue websites because you're not at the venue level if you're at the if you're the ticketing company direct them to the venue and just say we're working with all of our venue operators who have posted all the safety requirements or guidelines or restrictions on their website and social media put it back on the venue and let the venue guide that i i think that's the safer way because it, where you are up in to is different than montreal halifax all across the country let let the venues be that that guide for you We have some new messages. I can't see messages, but if you if you want to okay. share them, please let me know. Uh, this is from Gerald. We work in different jurisdiction jurisdiction across he just, Canada. He just, asked that, he just asked. That. Oh, sorry, sorry. I missed. That. Okay, I'm trying to multitask here. Gerald's still upset that the Canadians beat the Leafs. He's still upset. <laughs> But if anybody has a question, just wave your hand or, or, or put it in the chat. Or you could always uh, find me on LinkedIn and send me messages directly after the conference is, is fine, too. Or find me on socials. I'm always happy to keep conversations going or share thoughts or, or help anybody we can. I'd love to stay in touch. Have you found that um, some of the local TV crews are, are, are good to utilize? coming into the venue to like kind of do a walkthrough one on one to show them maybe like some of the vent what the venues are doing new whether it be well, it, grab it and go can, concessions it can whatever. be but it, it can be but we're not we're not there yet for some of the venues so I don't want to bring anybody in until we're there um I'm, I'm based in Philadelphia and I, I used to be at Wells Fargo and I'm no longer there but they recently opened at full capacity uh this past Sunday for a, an NBA playoff game and, and watching fans go in, but they kind of limited what they could see and do. Again, you don't want to, you also don't want to put people in a panic. And I, and I think there's a lot of uneasiness with America when they watch TV or when they watch the news, or even when you go to a store, you're like, that guy doesn't have a mask. That one does, that one doesn't. There's so much uneasiness. So if you kind of reduce the, the anxiety level by not giving them too much access to, to just giving them what they need, I think you're going to make it a lot easier because I think customers may be hesitant to go if they see too many people in one space or some people with masks and some with not. That's why I direct everybody to the website and what we're following the guidelines is provided by the CDC and, and the local authorities. We're doing what is we're doing what is allowed. I, we kind of followed that here in uh, in Columbus when we did kind of what you talked about. We hosted a, a you know a, that that media event earlier in the day of the day of opening. We had a tremendous number of media requests to come out and be in the concourse as fans came in, and we turned all those down because we didn't want the narrative to be the camera turning towards just like you said that that guy that doesn't have the mask or the issue with the guest hidden. We didn't want that becoming the story. So mm -hmm. while they did come out and broadcast live from our plaza, that was a very different, uh, uh, they had plenty of B-roll to cut to uh, from the media stuff earlier in the day. We don't usually let media just roam the concourse and film stuff uh, on another time. So we didn't think we wanted to just go ahead and just not do that once we started reopening for for fans at the venue. So I think think you're right on there. Thanks for sharing that, That that's that's great. I, 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 I'm agreeing with you that you, we control the message. We control what we want to control. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to be anti-media. I, I love the media, and I'll do anything the media wants. And, and most of my friends on this call know that. But I think in this, in this world today, we have to be a little bit more disciplined on what we want to allow, because we're controlling it now. We, we have the ability to control it on our social media. We can make sure we're, we're dictating what that message is. And the ones that need to know it most are our customers, and we're reaching out to them directly via email, on social, and on email, and let the media pick up that story. They're gonna, 
I've seen that a lot. The media just pick up so-and-so website said to do this or, or the venue said this according to their website. Any other messages, Vanessa? Yeah, I think um, a, a good point on that, which you can definitely talk to, you know, we did a bunch of driving <coughs> concerts and we, per me, I just made up the rules and I basically limited it to three photographers per show because I wanted to be able to escort them and control what they were shooting because, oh, John, Vina just joined. We got to drive in with John. Anyway, um, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure you could talk to that, too, is just controlling the photographers right now. And well, the, the, the and photographers, the, the photographers, and I'm talking about the ones that you get the email from. I have a camera. I want to come shoot the show. Yeah. Right. We all get that guy. It's like I have a website. I want to come shoot the show. We're not we're not going to be able to accommodate those like we used to because we just times are different. And, and I think we could get away with just offering a house photo, have a house photographer there and allow just say, hey, if, if you need a photo for your website, we'll be happy to, to supply one. And you watch how fast most of them go away. Um, when we had the drive in concerts this past summer in Philadelphia, there was a lot of expectations from people they, they hadn't worked shows in a while they love music they want to be there i didn't want to have 15 freelance photographers there i said there will be no photographers but we have a house photographer and we approved what shots went out we have, and we let the artist approve what shots went out and those are the only shots that went out we got great coverage every website used it and we didn't have to worry about well, they're taking a picture of people out of their cars. They're supposed to be in their cars. And this guy has a mask and this guy doesn't have a mask. It's too hard to police that. So we just reduced the number of photographers. Yeah, we, we um, Vanessa, speaking back to the, uh, to the and, I, and I apologize for, for coming in late, <coughs> um, speaking back to the drive throughs last year, our first drive through we turned down CBS National uh, to cover it for all the reasons that everyone oh, just described. But, um, but what they did was Sorry. come in the next day with Jim Gaffigan uh as a you know as one of their correspondents and did their own thing and that actually worked because obviously they want to paint him in a good light but it was our first ever drive-in th uh, show it was one of the first in the country back in uh, july 7th of last year we had no idea what was going to happen we had no idea if bruce springsteen was going to show up as is always rumored uh for shows in in new jersey we had no ideas of you know if people were going to come out of their cars and, and storm the you know, stage. So there was a lot of care taken in, and the shows that we continued to do last summer into this year, we really have also kept it a media free zone. It, we we just got to control the narrative in all of the. Yeah, John, you bring up such a great point. I hate turning around news. I had to turn away CNN mm -hmm. because California, if Karen if Karen Smith are like every day there for a while the governor was saying something new and we were like we're open we're not open we're open we're not open and i was like oh i don't want to miss out on this interview but i'm like well what am i saying we right. have nothing to say really except for we're excited to bring live music back so we had to we, we didn't do the interview you're right and and john thanks for sharing some insight there we're, we're not we're not we, we just we're not what we were last time a year ago we're a little different we're a little hesitant because we don't have all the answers and I don't think anybody does. And I, and I think we're, you know, shows are coming back, but we might be six months of, away from being back to what we once were. I, I don't want to put a number on it, but I just think we have to wait a little bit longer in, in allowing all that access and explaining all that. And I think let the customers come in, let the customers have a great time, let the customers share their experience and, and, their positive vibes will bring more positive vibes and more people will come in and, and just use social media. And just, I think that's the way to go right now. Less is more, less is more right now. Hey, Ike, uh, it's Kay. I'm also from a, a venue in Canada. Um, I think you're right, but I, I do think that um, the reporters are dying for content. So they have, they've had nothing to sink their teeth into for so long. And so we, I just announced my first show. We are still, um, as of today, I am, we are still in stay at home orders. Um, we finally come out of that tomorrow, but we are, um, you know, we're in a bit of a, a different situation, but we just keep pushing back and, you know, and saying it's, we don't really have the answers yet and putting stuff on the website. I mean, that's fine, but I find that they're not really going there. They want, 
they want the venue spokesperson. They want to hear from us. So even if it's just saying the venue spokesperson, you know, this is what they had to say and it's follow your public health guidelines. The question I'm getting from fans and, and reporters are, do you need to have your vaccine before you can come back into a venue? Right, so, but, hey, yeah. th th thanks for thanks for your question. But when when is that show? When is the first show? You know what? It's it's this that particular show I announced is not until February 22. You so, can't even answer the question now. I know. Yeah. So, so I what, know. I, what I would say is to the reporters that are calling you, and you're right, they 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 they're dying to write something. Yeah. Just say to them, just say, hey, it's great to be announcing shows. Stay in touch, and as we get closer, we'll answer your questions. But we, and I don't even want to, and that's the end. And I'm only telling you this, not to report this, but like, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next week. And this is six. The, the show's eight months away. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know what's going to like. It's not yeah. even worth answering the question right now. But just yeah. say to them, hey, I, I know, I know, you want to ask some questions, and uh, we'll answer them all when we get closer. Let's just stay in touch. And I think that that'll they'll they'll appreciate that. They'll, they'll, that's going to buy them some time. There's just there's nothing to say right now. There really yeah. isn't. What else, Vanessa? I'm sorry, I can't see the stuff that's coming up. Um, I don't see any more questions, but you guys don't be shy. I feel like all of us pretty much know each other. Like it's so good to see you guys, like Sheila and Jenny and Kay. I know Bobby Goldwater's. I saw Bobby room. on, and I, I saw my buddy Rich yeah. from uh, venues now. It was great to see. Rich and I think Glenn there. Nicholson. And I mean, come on, you guys are chatty normally. Veronica's in here. Rich, Nina's in here. Anna Wong, Quinn Kim. <laughs> That's good. We can it, 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 look. We can keep the conversation going all all year long, and you know, whatever we can do a Facebook chat or. LinkedIn comments, but I think it's just, I think it's share what we're all going through. And I think we're all in this together. And I don't think anybody has to come out of the gate. And, and, and Kay, I don't mean to call on you, but you were the last one to share a comment, but I don't think we all have to come out of the gate and talk about our shows that are not happening for a while. It's just, hey, we're excited to be announcing shows. It feels great. And stay with us. We'll be sharing some measures people have to take when we get closer. But for now, just keep an eye on our website. At, um, this is Nina Jackson. I'm at NRG Park in Houston. Um, and I'm just going to jump in. It's not really a question, but it's just a, a comment. We had a situation where um, our governor uh, has been, you know, no mask and let's open up 100 percent. Our local government and we're a county owned complex. Uh, so the, the local county judge who's head of the, the county and our mayor have both been more uh, conservative and, you know, wear a mask and, you know, distancing and 25% capacity and all of this. Well, at one point, the governor came, uh, had a press conference and said we were a hundred percent. He was opening up Texas a hundred percent. And literally right after the press conference, I had a TV station called me, like, I think it was CBS affiliate or something asking, you know, if we were, if all events were opening up, you know? And so really it was just a matter of saying, I can't remember who the name of the girl that called from the assignments desk, but basically it was, we're hearing this information just, just as you are hearing it <laughs> right now, we're going to process it. And then, you know, we'll, we'll move forward and then, you know, we'll get back with you. And so she kind of started laughing. She's like, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Nina, that's, that's yeah. the answer though. That's, that's right. the answer. And we and heard it just now, just like yeah. you did. So the reporters doing their job. Yeah. And, and every time the restrictions change in one of our markets, you get the call right away. And it's right. like, we don't have a show for another month. Yeah. Like, we don't need to address this right now. We we have time. Or like you said, we're just getting this information as well. And yeah. uh, we're processing it. And we'll, we'll let you know if anything changes. But, and then but, it went away. And she never called back. Yeah. It went away. She never did call back. Yeah. But but it, yeah. again, again, I, I kind of brought this up at the beginning that some of us might be experiencing some anxiety about how to address this or how to answer these questions. And and I don't think you have to worry about it right now, unless you have an event tonight, you got time. Unless you, unless you're like pressed for somebody's standing outside. And, and I've had a venue where a reporter showed up, like like Nina mentioned. I said they, they're, we're not going to say anything right now. There's no event here for a couple of weeks. You can get a show calendar update information on our website. Thanks for coming, but take your time. Take your time.
But he had starting an agreement, so that's cool. <coughs> How is everybody doing? I mean, this was a hell of a year for us. <laughs> I mean, it was like every day was a fire drill. And I think for PR, it was so much more work. It's still so much more work communicating. And I mean, how's it going for all of you guys? I'm burned out. Very burned out. We've, we've done shows since October. In, in one way or another, it, you know, New Jersey was a was an epicenter. Everyone knows someone who died, um, and it has been it has been a, a struggle. It has been a fire drill every day. That that's really a great way to put it. Except for the fires were real. It wasn't that fire drill that goes off because they're testing the system. They were real, um, and I, I think that goes for anybody in PR and or marketing right now that kept things going throughout the year. Very blessed, very lucky to have done that. But at the same time, man, we're tired. And now we're coming on board when every single agent wants every single show to be theirs and theirs only. So my best to everyone. It's it's gonna be a crazy couple of months as we as we get back on the tracks. We'll get I think there. you're right, John. And I think the other problem is a lot of us have lost staff. Yeah. So we're so. we're not feeling great about that either. <laughs> It's and then true. the weird thing is, is when um, now this is turning into a therapy session, but let's just talk it out. You guys, you have you have the, us that are burnt out. We haven't stopped. And we're covering for the staff that we lost. Now, the staff that we lost is coming back and are kind of gung ho and they're getting up to speed. And you're just like, you just have the energy. <laughs> it's a weird, oh, it's a weird dynamic with staff, too, you know. It is. I, I lost one person due to, you know, the furloughs and layoffs. But then the other two, I had two people just leave because other companies lured them away for more money. So I've gone from a department of five to a department of two. And literally, I am beating my head against the wall and crying every day. But so and we, we, and probably so also, the therapy. we probably also have people who lost people because they didn't believe our industry was going to come back. Mm -hmm. I was going to I say think that you're no, I, I was going to say that it should be a topic at the conference, maybe not in this breakout, but I think we have to reevaluate mm -hmm. how we did events before and how we're going to yeah. do them now with the smaller group and find new ways to make people work in different capacities. But again, I, I, I think social media is, is so valuable that and hopefully everybody uses it to the, to really uh, maximize what they're doing. But but I don't think you have to put out a press release for every show you do anymore, because I think the artists are posting it on social. If you just put it up on social, the media is following you. I hope they are. And they're probably going to say, according to Venue X or Energy Stadium, uh, the, the rodeo is on tonight or whatever, because you put it on your social. So find new ways to make things work and make it easier for you, and, and you'll find that it, it, it's not gonna be so bad. I have one other thing to say that I just did with the show that I announced. Sure. Um, I reached out to the promoter first just to make sure it was okay, because who knows in this day and age, but I knew that my media would be dying for content, so I asked if I could send them an embargo press release, and I just used it as an opportunity to start building that relationship again <coughs> with the media to say, hey, this is what's happening, this is what's going on, I know you've been dying, I follow you on social, you follow me on social, so I know that you're desperate for content. So it was a it was great for me to do. So I would just throw that out to anybody who hasn't who hasn't had that opportunity yet. It was super successful for me. And so the second that show was announced, it came out with a huge story. And you know, thankfully, I'm only 400 tickets away from selling out this show. So I don't know people. Okay, hey, that's it. great. Thank thanks for sharing that. I I do that a lot when when promoters will say, excuse me, we're announcing this show at five o'clock today. And it's like, you can't announce it until five o'clock today. Well, that doesn't help on deadlines. And so what I, a lot of times will do is, is issue it on embargo and, and send it at noon and just say nothing till five o'clock so that the, the newspaper website has it, the five o'clock news has it. 
So when that announcement goes out at five, it's everywhere. So sometimes if, if other markets aren't doing that, I, I strongly suggest doing that because you're right, Kay, you get, you really open up a, a create a good relationship with the reporter and other media members and it, get, it makes them feel special. And, and you'll find that that announcement grew from just a radio drop at five o'clock to everywhere. Yeah. So thanks for sharing. That was awesome. We're running out of time, Vanessa, and I don't want to just abruptly end the conversation, but I've enjoyed sharing some thoughts and I, and I appreciate people chiming in and asking questions and hopefully people found it informative. Again, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I, I don't know how to, oh, here's how you can say something. I think I'll enter my email and if you have questions, you could just email me and we'll keep the conversations going there at any time or you could find me on social media. I think there's a EAMC Facebook group too, so I'm in there as well, so. Yeah, thanks. No, thank you, Ike. It's always good to see so many of you guys and get caught yeah, up. I, 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 saw that Dave Gro I saw that Dave Grohl was on yesterday, but I have David Lee Roth, but he's not available till about 4.15, 4.30, so he might miss the call. So I'll tell him all that you said hello. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just being you can have David Lee Roth join our happy hour tonight. That'd be fun. He could be our surprise guest. Surprise Dave's every day. That's right. Dave Matthews on Friday. Yeah, we got a different Dave every day. All Dave, all night. It wasn't at Dave TV. Remember David Lee Roth? It was. It TV? was. <laughs> David Lee Roth, you could ask him one question and I'll keep talking for about four hours. You won't have to do anything. He's He just has everything to say. It's great. Um, I was just going to piggyback real quick on what sure. Kate was saying. I think, yeah, it was Kate that was saying about the embargo. I love an embargo. Um, I, I, I just did. I give, I'd like to give somebody an exclusive. So like breaking news. I just gave Polestar like an exclusive that's going to break uh, for Friday. Worked out all the interviews. It's important also for you guys. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but like to know when the editors meet. So like Polestar, they meet at like 1030 and they decide they assign writers and stuff and their deadlines Wednesday. So you got to get it in like Monday to get it in the magazine or Tuesday. So you get it in, you get your site, you know, you get your um, exclusive and then you set the embargo for all the other papers. And at least you have one, especially for something kind of big. So I'm sure all of you guys know this, but it's also important if you guys can remember that stuff. I try to avoid exclusives because it just it, it pisses everybody else off. So I just I just do everybody on embargo. I would just do that because I, unless you unless you're in a one mar one newspaper town or one TV station town, I don't like upsetting anybody. And if Rolling Stone or Billboard want to jump on with an exclusive, maybe, but I, I'd rather just do embargo. We I, I helped announce the Peach Music Festival in Scranton. It's a four day. Um, live music camping experience with uh, mostly jam bands. And it's really the first festival to come back this year. So I dropped it as an embargo for everybody. There was no exclusives. And when we said the embargo was lifted at 10 o'clock, Billboard had it, Rolling Stone had it, everybody had it all at the same pole star. Everybody had it at the same time and nobody nobody flinched on it. It's great. Yeah, I great work with that. That was everywhere here in Jersey when you drop it. And that's a solid two hours from from us, but everyone knew about it. Come on up the mountain, John. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's doing his wake up with Warren, which is always a good way to wake up on a Sunday morning. It's fun. Does anybody not have anything? anything? I know that I saw Shelby Shelby O'Neill. <laughs> yes, you're right. Thank you. I, I she's just in the chat. If you guys don't see it, we had two full capacity NBA playoff games last week at American Airlines Center down here in Dallas, and all went very well. There seems to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Good luck to everyone as we get back into it. I agree. I definitely think there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. I think, it, again, it's like let let the let the events speak for themselves. Let the fans share the, the excitement and let the fans tell the story. And, and the media will pick up on that. And we're, we're, we'll get through it. We'll get through it together. It's just, just we're all in this together and we're going to have fun. So I, I know everybody's got to get to other sessions. And hey, look, it was great to see you. Uh, I saw Cindy pop in, and I I want to wave to Cindy. I don't see her anymore, but hi, she Tammy. was having Wi-Fi yeah. issues. Oh, Tammy's on. Tammy. Hi, Tammy. That's good to see everybody. I just want to see everybody. Let's have oh. lunch together. Fun. Yeah. 
Well, your lunch is different than mine. Yours, I already ate already. Three hours ago. Uh, well, thank you very much, Ike. Um, he put in his uh, email address if you guys have any questions, and then hopefully um, we'll see you guys at an, uh, the next session is same si sort of format. So we'll see you soon. Great to see everybody. Stay safe. Stay in touch. See you soon. Thanks, Ike.